Hey everyone, welcome to Marketing by John. Today we're talking about the difference between focusing on price and product. So whether you're a massive company or you're just a startup, the question will without a doubt come along, should we focus on building up our product, our offering and making it more premium or should we focus on keeping low prices? And often it's difficult to do both at the same time. It's not impossible as I'll tell you in a little bit, but it is difficult. So let's look at some examples. Here we are, uh, the end of 2020. Uh, when this goes out, it'll probably be early 2021. And we're going to look at some examples of how different brands and companies have, have navigated the pandemic with this question. So let's look at Walmart. Walmart's uh, a brand we all know, um, either love or hate, depending on uh, your preferences. But Walmart built their entire business on everyday low prices. It's literally their tagline. And they've done this very successfully. Uh, even though in the 80s and 90s, uh, their, uh, you know, their brand maybe took a hit for the quality or their experience, you know, they did always have low prices. Um, so during the pandemic, well, I'd say in 2020, you know, they've really focused on the next iteration of Walmart, which is a competitor to Amazon. And so they've started to heavily invest in e-commerce and they've started to invest in their um, in their staff, their their customer experience in store. And so here they are. They've gone from low day, low prices to now focusing a little bit more on the experience, a little bit more. I don't want to say premium experience, but they're trying to make sure that their brand is intact but they're not sacrificing the low, their low prices. They still have a serious competitive advantage to a lot of retailers, which is their distribution network. You know, they can launch these things to compete with Amazon, which is like, you know, order today, pick up in the store tomorrow, order today, we'll deliver it to you tomorrow, and we'll, you know, deliver it from one of our stores. So they have this built-in distribution network that will allow them to have an amazing customer experience uh, and maintain low prices. Now let's in turn look at a brand like Wegmans, which if you don't know Wegmans, holy sh**, you got to come to the East Coast. Wegmans has, without a doubt, the best, most loyal, I should say one of the most loyal customer bases that I've ever seen. I'm a loyal Wegmans shopper. They're a, they're a big grocer here in the East Coast, and they consistently rank in the top five for uh, most loyal brands in, in the, definitely the U.S., um, and it's because of their experience. You know, they have never focused on price, or at least they haven't made price the number one focus. They've always focused first on their products, on their customer experience. And you can see this. They always focus on their staff. You know, their team, their 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 tr their staff training, the the fact that they give them benefits, the fact that they treat them well, they get proper time off, they uh, invest in their education with college funds and things like that. It makes a happy staff, and a happy happy staff makes your customer service amazing. And your customer service makes people want to go back there for ease and and uh, quality of shopping. Not only that, but their white label products, like their Wegmans generic products, most of the time are better than the branded ones. It's insane. Most of the time you go to a, a retailer, and if you buy a generic product, you expect to pay you know, 50% as much money, but you... You're going to get a cheaper product. You sort of know that. Now with Wegmans, you're going to pay a little bit less, probably only a few cents, but you'll get at least a good enough product or as good as the branded one right next to it. Insane. And so during the pandemic, they, instead of cutting their prices or slashing their prices or laying staff off, what they did is improve their service. They doubled down and they, they, you know, uh, uh, jacked up Instacart promotions and and curbside delivery and takeout to go options and and they did all of this and uh, you know furthered their business. I don't know if they grew their business during the pandemic. I don't have those numbers in front of me, but you know without a doubt they at least maintained it by feeding people through this pandemic. Um, so let's look at a couple other brands here. TJ Maxx discount stores or uh, yeah, discount retail stores. We all know TJ Maxx. They've got 4,000 plus and 5,000 stores, something like that across the world. And their whole entire business model is quantity, not quality. Uh, they're selling overstock. And when you go in there and buy a pair of jeans from True Religion or whoever it might be, 
you know, these are $150 jeans that you're buying for 20 bucks, you know that there might be threads that come out or rips or tears or little marks on it or something like that, imperfections, one leg that's longer than the other. But you're okay with that because you're paying 20 bucks. So it's much more like throwaway retail. If it doesn't work, then, you know, so be it. Um, they started out the pandemic saying, you know what, we're not going to change a thing. We're going to keep on keeping on. Uh, the CEO came out and said that, but uh, they did have to make a turn uh, to, and and their home goods store, which is, so there's TJ Maxx, I think Marshalls and home goods, like those are all part of the same company. So they've, they've launched e-commerce in their home goods store uh, because their foot traffic just, you know, bit the bullet during the pandemic. So they were forced to go e-commerce, um, which is focusing a little bit more on their customer experience. And then let's look at Nordstrom. Nordstrom is a retailer, premium retailer, high prices, high, you know, high uh, quality products, or at least high perceived quality products. Uh, <laughs> they invested $500 million in a store in Manhattan, I think in February 2020. So here they are trying to go all in on premium products and their premium brand. And then the pandemic hits and since have pivoted to focus a little bit more on uh, their Nordstrom Rack, which is their TJ Maxx sort of uh, competitor. It's their off-market price store. They have physical stores, and they've decided to focus on their e-commerce offering there as well because they've had to. And so when you look at the Walmart-Wegmans relationship, um, Walmart is focusing a little bit more on their customer experience. Wegmans went deeper into their customer experience. When you look at the TJ Maxx Nordstrom relationship, uh, TJ Maxx uh, is going a little bit more to their customer experience because they have to, like the e-commerce. And Nordstrom Rack is uh, going a little bit more towards lower price because they have to. Um, you know, you know, in their di in their their Nordstrom Rack offering. So let's round this conversation out um, before I give you a few tips with the granddaddy of them all, Amazon. Amazon does both, and they do it really well. Amazon has amazing customer experience. They routinely show up on the top list of most loyal brands in the world, uh, definitely in the United States. Uh, but they also offer the best prices that you can find almost anywhere. Um, you can't find every price, every product on Amazon. Some brands maintain their relationships with their customers and they don't want to be on Amazon for losing their customer relationship to Amazon. Um, that's a trade-off that you have to have when going on Amazon is Amazon will take over the customer service. Um, but here's how they've done that. Amazon has built an amazing brand by always keeping the customer first, even over their shareholder profits, even over their uh, relationships with the brands that they offer. It's always about the customer. And that starts with making sure they get the best possible price that can be offered. But they are not willing to sacrifice their customer service, their experience with the brand Amazon. Um, my company, Good Monster, is deeply involved in Amazon management and marketing. And we know that they will shut a brand down if they are not living up to that quality you know if they get enough bad reviews enough products that are defective they'll just be like yep you're off our platform it doesn't even matter um and so this is how they've focused on main maintaining their brand while giving the best possible pricing that can be available across the internet and so there's your key right <laughs> right there if 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 you want to be the best in your market go as low as you can for your price and put as as much of your profits into your customer ex experience as possible, and you will win. So that's how you boil down the equi the the balance between price and product. If you want to be the most competitive in your market, be willing to give up profits in order to make sure you have the lowest prices and the best experience. It's the brands that are not willing to give up the pros the profits. It's the public companies that can't give up profits because their shareholders won't let them. They want their dividends um, that won't win. They're handcuffed, right? So that's a decision your company has to make. Are you willing to take less profits? Are you willing to live more frugally at the top, the executive team, all the way down throughout the entire 
uh, uh, workforce? Are you willing to take less as an executive to give back to more to your employees to give them a better quality of life so they're happier uh, at their job and they're willing to put more into their job because they're happier, thus creating a better product? Um, you know, those are all questions you have to have internally. But there it is. That's the equation. That is your ticket to success in 2021 is to lower your prices to where you have enough profit to be able to invest in your customer experience or your product development to have a high quality product and rinse and repeat. That equation will at least get you started on the right uh, path to strategizing uh, you know, your growth in 2021 and beyond. Uh, because at the end of the day, you have to, you have to decide, is the uh, juice worth the squeeze? You know, is, is lowering your price worth the hit you will take on your ability to offer a customer experience? Is uh, investing in your product worth the raising, the, the, the rise in price that you'll have to make in order to afford that R&D and product development? Um, so boil it down to is the juice worth the squeeze and, and, and try to map that out and hopefully you'll come to your answer. But my theory is that we should all get used to taking a little bit less profit if we can. Just get a little less greedy and take a little bit less money as leaders of our companies. Um, if your goal is to be the most competitive uh, and grow faster than your uh, competitors, because that's the that's the answer. Thanks, everyone, for watching this episode of Marketing by John. If you liked it, hit the like button. If you're on YouTube or podcast, make sure you leave us a review or hit the thumbs up or a comment or something to let us know that you enjoyed this and uh, share it with your friends and, and coworkers if you think they would find it valuable. Until next time, adios. Adios.